A huge loss for the local indigenous community with the passing of Susie Kiknosue Jones, the president of the Shingwok Education Trust. Both board, staff, and students send their deepest condolences to Susie's family, her residential school survivor community, and members of Walpole Island First Nation. Chair of Shingwok Kinumagi Gamig, Lyle Sayers, said that Susie will be fondly remembered for her passion and dedication for culture-based education and reconciliation. She was the voice for those who did not return home from residential school. Her work will continue to be carried on by her children and others. What would you say if you could pay your parking tickets with a toy? City Council will be asked during tonight's meeting to approve a new pilot project. Toys for Tickets is an initiative that would allow people to pay their parking tickets from November 1st to December 1st with toys that would be donated to Christmas cheer. City staff is recommending a one-year pilot for the program that would see unwrapped toys used as payment of parking fines from November 1st, as I said, to December 1st. The program doesn't include accessible parking fines. A receipt of purchase of equal or greater value must be provided. All toys will be included in the annual stuff-a-bus. Gift cards will not be accepted and all toys must be provided to the indicated location by December 13th to qualify. The Marconi Event Center held their annual Italian festival yesterday, this time indoors only because of the heat. The event had kid-friendly activities like face painting, arts and crafts, and Ryan McFarling, the illusionist, as well as some entertainment for the adults and a lot of great Italian dishes. There's kids events downstairs, face painting outside for the children. There's going to be uh, music. There's going to be a magician that's going to come by later. Uh, yeah, all kinds of entertainment and fun things. And it really gives people an opportunity to get together, meet their neighbors, their friends uh, in the Marconi, and, and obviously have uh, eat some good Italian food. I'm here celebrating with my Italian friends. And, uh, you know, it's just an absolutely wonderful day. And we continue to um, thrive. The Marconi uh, is under new ownership. And, um, you know, you can just see how the, uh, the food is just really, really good here. And uh, yeah, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful festival. And uh, you know, I'm proud to uh, represent uh, the Italians in this community uh, in City Hall. And in fact, I'm actually on the Italian Canadian executive. Um, although I'm not Italian, I was asked to join it just because of the uh, uh, the importance of the Italian community uh, in Sault Ste. Marie in Canada. So it's truly an honor to be on the executive of the Canada Italian uh, Parliamentary Association. Officials say evacuations have been put on hold in Pekanjikum First Nation as the forest fire near the Northern Ontario community has reduced in size. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry says that as of yesterday, the fire burning near Pekanjikum was about 447 square kilometres. Jonathan Scott says the fire was reduced by about 60 kilometres because of rain over the previous few days, which also helped improve the air quality in the area. The commander of Pekanjikum's Emergency Operations Centre, Matthew Hope, says the full evacuation of the First Nation was paused in light of the good news. He says the community will take it day by day in deciding what to do with the residents who remain in Pekanjikum. The Canadian Armed Forces says 2,079 residents have been taken out of the First Nation since a full evacuation was ordered back on July 8th. Of those 424 have landed in Regina. Saskatchewan offered last week to take 2,000 people from the community after host cities in Ontario ran out of space. According to internal federal records, Canadian inspectors intercepted nearly 900 food products from China over concerns about faulty labels, unmentioned allergens, and harmful contaminants that included glass and metal 
between 2017 and early 2019. The document provides an inside look at imports from China that caught the attention of officials for appearing to fall short of Canadian standards, from gumballs with extraneous metal to three-minute chow mein that contained an insect to spicy octopus feet flagged for a non-specific hazard. The list, compiled by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, was obtained through access to information law. Its release comes at a time of significant public interest in Canada about cross-border food inspections, especially those involving China. The scrutiny of agricultural goods has been central to a diplomatic dispute between Canada and its second biggest trading partner.